following suit with my last video, the top 10 remove content, this video features my most favorite added content within Glory. That last video was kind of hard for me to do, so I'll hopefully this one is a bit easier. Number 10. The first thing that comes to my mind instantly is the crossbows. Even though I should have put this as number one, I wanted to mention them immediately. You got crossbows that poison, some that curses, curse enemies, making them ultimately easy to kill. Crossbows that freeze enemies in place. Crossbows that fire enemies that can bolt. Why did I not think of this a long time ago? They are awesome. Um, sorry, moving on. Number 9, the Vorpal Attack. Such a cool looking attack and concept idea. A wave of visual hatred that has been compressed to an immensely thin state through arcane forces that it slices through enemies. And you can sling them off of your weapons. All my yes. Number 8, Ring of the Rose. I could make a list of my favorite accessories in this game, but this one stands out because you get it very early in the game. You can only get it as Relic though. But it boosts various stats including crit chance as well as health gain from potions and healing items by 50%. Number 7, Skylore. Skylore is this mystic city in the sky that you can gain access to early by talking to the angelic being that eventually shows up within Sanctum of Scales after some story progression. She gives you the lofty feather that has unlimited use and let me give you a bit of advice. Don't head to Skylore until you've become an Archon. Just don't. You will get decimated. Number 6. Ashfall. Ashfall is another optional area that is rather massive, with blood red skeletons known as life takers and ember spirits lingering about its volcanic ashen landscape. What could be here, you might be wondering. Shh, it's a secret. No spoilers. Number 5. The Crimson Voyager. I wanted to make my own airship for my game and that I did, and I loved how it turned it out. You can also use the airship coordinator nearby where you first get the Crimson Voyager and teleport it to various locations for use. Enjoy the scenic flights. Number 4. The visual changes when you become an Archon and, <laughs> and Lunar Archon. They are just awesome. Number 3, Lunar Downfields. Oh man, I'm all about space, and this game, this game was crafted a lot out of the things that I love. So I had to include either a moon or going to space in it somehow. I found out how to do it twice, and most awesomely. Number 2, Desert of Dreams and the Temple of the Ancients. I love desert music, so I had to make use of my Desert of Dreams song, and I made an optional dungeon within the desert in which the layout spells in Sidness, and the layout actually works great as a dungeon too. Man, I love my creativity. And now, number one. This one takes me back to the early stages of The Legend of Relic. Back before the village of Jame wasn't even created, before crossbows weren't even thought of, before Skylore, Ashfall, the Desert of Dreams, or even a thing. This is more of a personal tribute to just how far this beloved game of mine has come and changed and improved and evolved. Number one spot belongs to the creation of Regina, because every time I play Talor and I start a new game once more, whether if it's for enjoyment or playtesting, I just smile and can't help but feel proud to be brought back to where all the dedication and love for my game series first began.